Let's welcome back to the show former White House National Security Advisor. He's retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. General, it's good to see you. Are we heading into a new Cold War with Russia and China? Yeah, Liz, I, uh, I think we're already there. Or if we're not there, we're fast approaching it. Look, I, here's what I think we've got three crises on our hands simultaneously. You've got the Iranian nuclear deal trying to renegotiate that. That's not going to work. You have China and Taiwan. But the most current one facing us right now, I believe, is what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. And, and, I, and I would, if I was advising the president, I'd say, you know, you need to think about what is Putin trying to do long term? Because it all, you have to understand what he's doing to be able to operate well and respond to him. And, and Putin looks at himself as the newest version of Peter the Great. You know, when you look at him, what he's doing right now, and you looking at the Russian Constitution, he can serve as president until 2037. That's longer than any Russian ruler, uh, the, a modern Russian ruler. That's longer than Stalin. It's longer than the great Tsarina Catherine the Great, and a little bit longer than Peter the Great, who is his role model, who is an expansionist czar going forward. So he kind of looks at himself historically, and I would tell the president, you need to think about how he's going to react to this because he's trying to do something, remodel Europe in the way he wants to look at it. And I think long term, he also wants to break NATO. Yeah, let's, and he's, he's doing a pretty good job of it. Let's talk about that. You know, there's talk of fresh okay. sanctions on uh, Vladimir Putin's inner circle on, and on Russia's energy produ mm -hmm. producers, also potentially cutting off access to the SWIFT international uh, global communication system for, for uh, you know, for the for banking. Uh, the White House can't just yeah. knock out Russia from SWIFT. It's based in Brussels. The U.S. has no That's jurisdiction right. over that. And by the way, it's mostly a communication system for indicating wire transfers are coming through and the like. They need to go to the EU to that to go along with that. The EU is likely worried Russia could retaliate and cut off their oil and gas yeah. supply. Right. That's exactly right. You know over. 60% of Europe depends on Russian energy, and if the, if the Nord Stream 2 pipeline gets approved, 80% of the LNG, the liquid natural gas, that Germany uses comes from Russia and it bypasses Ukraine. So he's got them on, on, over a real economic barrel, and he knows that, and he's applying all the pressure he can. And we happen to be sitting watching it, and he's going to apply pressure on us as well. In the long term, if he can break the EU, he can break them economically. I think it's a long-term way to break NATO. And that's in his long-term game plan. Look, he's, we're playing checkers. He's playing chess. Yeah, let's, and he let's, knows it. He's been through four U.S. presidents. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, no, he, he's been through four U.S. presidents already. He knows Biden is not a strong leader because he knows what happened in four years with Obama, and Biden, remember, that's when we lost Ukraine. I'm sorry, that's when they took Crimea from Ukraine. He knows he's not a strong player in the international community. And so he's playing that as well as he can. He's playing a very strong hand. He's a very, very shrewd and very ruthless leader. I mean, you know, nothing stopped Russia from taking Crimea in 2014, including the vice president's diplomatic efforts. So that didn't happen. Um, you know, and we're still waging mm -hmm. war against U.S. oil and gas, but somehow. Mm -hmm. We're going to Russia asking them to produce. Somehow oil from Russia is better for climate change than U.S. oil. I want to move on to this. Your reaction to China. China is now threatening retaliation after the uh, White House announced a diplomatic bo boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics. Yeah. Uh, and it's also China is reportedly launching a potential military base off the coast of Africa. Your word on this? Yeah, look, it's, I think it's about time that President Biden stands up and says, hey, enough of this. You, we're just not going to tolerate it. Look, I was fortunate to, to serve four years under President Trump and Vice President Pence. They wouldn't put up with this kind of stuff, not at all. They would believe and work in an asymmetric way to push back on this or do something that would make life very difficult for the Chinese or the Russian or the Iranians. And building that base on the western part of Africa, they've already got an eastern base in Djibouti, and it's all part of debt diplomacy. People forget that when the, the, the Chinese go out and they help you, they're really decided, making a move to actually su support themselves in the future and hurt you. Look what they did recently in Uganda. They could, Uganda couldn't pay the debt that the Chinese incurred upon them. So what did the Chinese do? They took control of the only international airport, the Entebbe International Airport, in Uganda. They're going to try to do the same thing potentially in the, in the Panama Canal because they own both of the big warehousing 
in ship uh, facilities, both the uh, Western and the, or the Pacific and the Atlantic end. So this is just the way they operate. And they're, they're playing another play to become not a regional power. What they're trying to play is becoming a global power. Okay, stay on that playing quickly. pretty well at Because it. it's death diplomacy for land grabs. So we're going to see Chinese mm -hmm. warships rearming opposite the east coast of, of uh, the right. U.S., you know, off the west coast of Africa, we're going to have that, a military base potentially. As China, as you say, in its debt diplomacy, if you yeah. can't pay up, we're just going to take your real estate. Your final word. Well let, me, well, let me give you the worst case scenario. What if you see a combined Russian and Chinese fleet moving around in the Pacific and the Atlantic as well? Because they're working together, and that wouldn't surprise me if all of you, you, you saw going into the future, these combined and joint maneuvers between Russia and Chinese fleets. That would cause us a major problem. Okay. General Keith Kellogg, thank you for your service to our country and thanks for coming on. It's good to see you come back soon. Uh, okay.